Hello and welcome to Claire's on Living Room, a season of Q&A events by Claire's on Home Cinema. I'm Hannah Flint, I'm a film critic based in London and I'm joined today in conversation with filmmakers and stars of Baby Done. So hello, Curtis Val, Sophie Henderson, director and writer and our star Rose Matafeo. Hello to you all. Hi, Anna. Hello. Hi, Anna. <laughs> Hi. I've seriously, seriously got a lot of energy. I was saying this film is exactly the bar we need right now in London, especially in lockdown number 3,431. Um, <laughs> so thank you so much. <laughs> That's why we made it. We made it to cheer everyone up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. If- I don't know if Sophie and Curtis understand how it's being like ingested up here because you guys are in New Zealand, but everyone is like, this is the film that we need oh, to really? watch. Yeah. We're locked inside. Oh, remember outside. It's, that's uh, very much the vibe I'm getting from it. It's very nice. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, like it's we're, been... <laughs> we're cut down in New Zealand. We're missing out on uh, on actually being around the, the, the proper release over there. So we always wanted to... Uh, the UK to have this film obviously with Matthew and, and Rose who everyone in the UK loves so it's great to to hear from so far away that it's um everyone's loving it it's really nice yeah exactly well I suppose we should go back to how it was conceived I'm so sorry I had to it <laughs> felt it felt it felt it felt true to the moment but no it's, it's a very personal story so yeah how was it conceived I'll stop saying conceive now. <laughs> um, I was pregnant. Curtis was the father of my child. Um, <laughs> uh, and I, I Are you sure? Way- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was <laughs> I, I am sure. <laughs> and I wrote it as a way of coping with my, with my absolute fear of um, losing my old life, I suppose. Um, it was my way of coping. I was not a good pregnant woman. Hated it didn't want to think of names or buy pram or wear stretchy clothes. I just wanted to write this film instead about a badly behaved pregnant woman. I was just in full denial that there would be a baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you helped facilitate this desire to write down this tragic, torturous pain of the <laughs> gift of life. <laughs> yeah, I guess um, I, guess I, I did. We, I guess I had the opposite kind of uh, attitude towards it. Yeah, so I was kind of uh, super into it, wondering what was why Sophie was uh, kind of resisting so much. Like it was meant to be like this, you know, great moment when we find out we're having a baby, and then you've got nine months to prepare for it, and it was all exciting for me. But um, and then and then I guess we realised like maybe other people are having like these thoughts as well, and and there might be an audience for it. And then we looked up to see what other films have been made with with um, that same kind of theme in mind, and there just wasn't really any which had kind of a more honest opinion about. A, a woman's attitude to, to childbirth. Yeah, I couldn't find a film that wasn't romancing pregnancy. Hmm. No, that's, a, that's, a, that, that's a funny thing that, um, that like feedback on film in terms of I've got so much of going, wow, you play such a dick. And like, and like, <laughs> I don't understand. But then, and then I'm, and I'm always like semi offended by that, but I'm like, I just, I don't get that because I don't see that that it's only people really honestly have been reacting like that because they never have seen a character like this and what Sophie's written and and it couldn't have been written by someone who doesn't have so much like uh, empathy for that character's position which I think Sophie has written so amazingly and that it's I don't know writing an actually complex female character and people are like so weirdly confronted by that because that is just never no one sees that Mm. and so their immediate reaction is like wait women can be assholes and it's like they're like (laughs) they can't compute it like like, wait they can do some crazy stuff and and that's just been such a funny reaction to it i think and why people have you know really connected to it so so, yeah and i had that in in the script like when i was writing the script and on the edit we had like they were like, oh, do you have any shots of, of it? Just her, like, touching her stomach. <laughs> 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 oh, that's the whole point of the movie. No, we don't have that scene. Oh, my God. Then, if you, if you, I, I don't think you would ever imagine Curtis being like, now, Rosary, just want just a shot. <laughs> and just touching your belly and, and looking up to the sky and being like, oh, this is so great. I would have never that's... done that. Maybe yeah, I am no. really happy about this. <laughs> <laughs> 
I definitely relate to that so much as someone who is like, you know, I watched the film, I was like, no, this is me. I feel seen. I mean, the closest I've had, I would say, you know, you're saying about what other films, you know, I've mentioned Obvious Child, the Gillian Rosepierre. I mean, she doesn't want a baby, but that similar kind of like women are allowed to be scared and not want to rush into things because it's also about your identity, right? You go from woman to girlfriend to fiance to wife and this obviously a different order and that one and then mother and it's only like who am I after that and I suppose you know Rose for you that was something that really jumped out when you when you you must have done when you read the script so tell me when you got that script what were you kind of like shocked and were like just devoured it really quickly were like agent please put me in touch with these people thank you <laughs> Rose was the script before it was a script Really? really? Oh, okay. Ages ago, yeah. No, it was. But even then, at that point, like you know, it was. It was like early kind of. We workshopped scenes. Like, I mean, it's so funny how far it came from that stage, right? When you guys were developing the the story, like we would, you know, just playing with all these different scenes and exploring that character, which I think was like like the luckiest thing to be able to go into shooting it, having had probably like a year year rehearsal like oh, improvisations of like what that character would have done and other things or you know I mean like their entire occupation changed I remember the day where I like read the script where I was like they're arborists <laughs> and I was like oh <laughs> I don't know if I'm afraid of heights or not but that's fine um yeah. but no it, it was it was I think from the mo even from those early stages of the script I felt like I think there was a reason, you know, why these guys got me in for it. And I think like were very generous and and I don't know, for me, writing a character to to my strengths, I think, and and I never I never struggled with any of it because I think it's just I mean, particularly with dialogue, I think Sophie's like so natural at like writing stuff that I would actually say. I mean I I because I write as well. And so when if I read a script that I was like what is this like I just wouldn't have anything to do with it do you know what I mean and and, and mm. with this script it was just like oh this is a character I can see this happening and I can see my I, I have an I, I'm able to like I don't know embody it so I think yeah I mean par partially it was too easy for me to 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 be Zoe sometimes and that I was like <laughs> sometimes my choices I was like yeah I would do this as well and I think that's exactly the same thing is that you know, when you watch it you're like yeah, this makes sense to me. Like this thought process completely mm. makes sense to me. It's not to someone else sees it and goes, that's a crazy decision. You're like, yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah, it's just crazy, man. What? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, I was so very lucky though. I said the go -go. So Tim, tell me a bit then. So if, if it seems that Rose was there from the, you had this idea in mind, you worked together. So casting wise, you obviously, you know who you Zoe is. And then you've got like ultimate, northerner who I'm northern as well so having a northern accent in a rom-com especially it's just so sexy to me I love it um so <laughs> how uh, how did you end up kind of building that uh building that and kind of you know the audition to fill out the rest of the cast because I think Matthew Lewis is so wonderful and so sincere and earnest and just so gorgeous in this that is such a great partner with Rose and creating this couple who are so like different but exactly the same and kind of wanting to I don't know experience everything but also the anxiety of being in a relationship especially as millennials yeah I guess um we had well, yeah we cast the net pretty far and wide and we were just I guess what we were really looking for was someone who had the right chemistry um with Rose and someone who could really kind of match her and uh and so uh, yeah we auditioned just lots of people around the world and Matthew just seemed to have that um that right balance of 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 extreme dramatic and comedy chops, you know, he could he could kind of play both at the same time. And and I remember we kind of did a what we called a chemistry test with Rose and Matthew on this kind of like terrible Skype line, which it was before Zoom kind of came along with with COVID, and we had this terrible. <laughs> kind of, Rose was you were in you were in Australia, oh, no. No, you, everyone. You were in. I was in UK. London. I was in London. You were here. I was in New he was Zealand. In Florida. He was in yeah, in Florida. Yeah. And it kept dropping out. But even within that that Skype, I could still tell that kind of um, that there was just something that really worked, and 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 they just vibed, and uh, it was kind of a no brainer. We we kind of looked at lots of people, but but Rose and Matthew just stood out as just this great working couple, and we were I guess trying to match a couple to to Sophie and my. 
personality as well. And I'm not saying Matthew's like me, um, but there's definitely traits and elements of him that, um, that I think um, we both kind of um, fill out in the character Tim. He was the first to audition as well. <laughs> I didn't recognize him. He was too. I was like, this guy's great. Weird. <laughs> Yeah, we he didn't. Was. It was nothing to do with the Harry Potter. No. Like, and, then someone, <laughs> and then someone was like, oh, yeah, he's, he's, ever, he's pretty well known because he played Neville Longbottom in Harry Potter. And we were like, oh, great. And so we watched those and we were like, yeah, this is some. Um, have you not seen a, Harry Potter? And I looked up his. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, <laughs> then we watched those. Yeah, those <laughs> yeah, those watched you watched the films, Harry, the yes. Harry Potter franchise. Harry we, Potter, have you heard of it? We, I don't know. That. Have you heard of them? I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, he's. He's got millions of like followers on Twitter and everything. But, but truly, the reason that we cast him was just because he really fit the bill of Tim, um, like down to a T. He was just perfect, and uh, and the 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 fame was just kind of a bonus for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you did you? I mean, the chemistry test. I mean, how is it working with him there, because uh, Rose? Because it just seemed, yeah, exactly there. I can imagine you also. You seem you probably had a lot of fun and hijinks it seemed maybe on set. Well, I mean, like, it's work. like, I mean, what, how long was the shoot? Like five weeks. It's an intense shoot. New Zealand in the film, you know, schedule, which is like super intense, really full days. And I was in basically every day except for one day. And uh, it was so full on for both of us. And so I think like naturally you kind of form like quite a close friendship like that. And I think uh, Matthew <laughs> for me is like, he, he's just got a good, his, his sense of humor is I think you really have to have a specific sense of humor to understand New Zealand uh, sense of humor. Mm. And I think, I mean, I think there is a kind of perception of what New Zealand humor is, but there is like almost another level of it where you kind of can't survive if you don't understand the dryness of it and know when people yeah. are kidding and know when people aren't, or else it would just be a nightmare like to shoot this film if you didn't <laughs> understand like, <laughs> all about sense of humor. <laughs> Like, you but know, he had his own, words, you know, his yeah. northern humour is quite interesting as well, eh, Rose? Totally. Like, he, he, they're they're yeah. very dry as well and kind of deadpan sometimes. And if he really yeah. likes something, if he really loves something, he'd just be like, that was fine. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, what does that mean? And he's like, no, fine is like a really like big compliment. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. over here it's slightly offensive to just be like, that was fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was... <laughs> The gold star of Prima, so, it's, it's yeah. all right. <laughs> so it's right and, at, um, just keeping up with Rose, I suppose. Like Rose was really like, uh, she would go for it and he'd just be right there with her. They were both fearless. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah no, no I love elements of like, we, you'd kind of, you know, uh, 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 like take things a bit further in terms of ad living or whatever. And um, he was always able to, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep up with the big boys. Yeah, <laughs> so weird. And there's, like, what am I talking about? There's, <laughs> there's a scene that uh, I quite love. I mean, lots of scenes I obviously love, but I where you, uh, spoiler, I suppose, but if you're watching this, you've already seen it, so I should hope you remember this scene, but you push him off when he's getting a bungee jump. There's lots of stunts in this. Rose, Matthew, did, did they, they do, do you do all your own stunts? Was that quite exciting to do? And also having pregnant women do physical activities. I feel like, we, like last time you see, I mean, Prevenge maybe, I mean, she's a serial killer in that movie, but you know, she's still actively killing she's people. She's doing like, stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> she's doing things, you know? Um, yeah, I think, you know, just, Having those stunts, was it good to kind of do the working on those bits? And I suppose also for Sophie, again, is that changing the narrative on what we think mothers are, pregnant women are, and actually we're not supposed to be, I say we, I'm not a mother. Women, well, mothers aren't supposed to be kind of, you know, kept in this little box and kept fragile creatures. So yeah, so Rose first, so, stunts, oh, Sophie next, yeah, fragile yeah. So creatures. <laughs> stunt, stunt, stunt wise, I mean, I, 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 we were very lucky because we had a, a stunt uh, double uh, for lots of my clean, tree climbing stuff. Um, uh, who was the well ended up being the wonderful Zane, who had to wear fake breasts and a wig that looked like me, and that was amazing because he really looked like me, which is I mean I guess I look like Zane, guess, <laughs> but um, but we did a, like a bit of like training and like uh, with uh, some like people uh, some arborists about like just tree climbing stuff and how the harnesses work and 
and what you're wearing and stuff. So like every time I see an arborist now, I look at their chainsaw proof trousers and I go respect because those are so hot and so deeply uncomfortable. <laughs> so I've got like, I've got, I, I feel like the Husqvarna like brand is, is a real brand in my kind of <laughs> mental space now. Um, but stunt wise, yeah, I, I, I thankfully didn't have to do the jumping, like the bungee jump jumping that Matthew had to do, which was quite nerve wracking, I think for him. Uh, and, but I did have to push him, which was almost, I mean, I'm not going to say it was worse, but it was. I, you were more worried than you were. I was more worried than him. Yeah. It, it, was, it was, it felt like the work, like, oh, I really was worried that I was going to ruin the take because, because it was just one take. And you're, and I think Curtis was like, don't, don't like react. Don't like, like anything like that. Like after you do it. But I think I did it. And I just was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> horrible. It felt like you were, it was the closest thing to like replicating, like murdering someone. And it was horrible. <laughs> like, remember that was, was, yeah, that, was, that, was um, that was the last thing we shot on the whole film. And we had to yeah. shoot it last because otherwise <laughs> the bonding insurance company wouldn't insure the film in case <laughs> Matt died. It's insane. <laughs> And they were like, also oh, great that you've got all the rest of it done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do one push, and if he dies, then we've still got the film. We've still made it. Yeah, we've still got it in the can. Make sure those cameras uh, are rolling. Uh, hey, and he might get a posthumous. He would have got a posthumous, you know, not nominations. Who knows? It might have happened. Yeah. <laughs> I remember Sophie. Sophie, you got obsessed with um female arborist, right? Like, I, I feel like that was your big thing. Yeah, I because yeah. I didn't have an occupation for them for ages, and I knew I wanted something that was like almost impossible for a, a pregnant woman to do. And, and someone was cutting down a massive pine tree across the road from us, and and I was like, there it is, that's it. It took four <laughs> days, people clapped at the end. It was like amazing, like theatrical thing. Um, and then I got obsessed with like female arborists. There's a few, of, there's a few of them, and you can buy a pregnancy harness and. Just got really into it, guys. But yeah, I wanted it to. <laughs> uh, I think we look at women as sort of pregnant women, especially that you know you're supposed to be careful and radiant and nurturing, and uh, and I just wanted Zoe to be the opposite of that, to just be a bit dangerous. I wanted to push the boundaries of what the audience would think was acceptable behaviour. For mm, absolutely, absolutely, and also I feel like, like you said, it's not just a film about. Um, you know, motherhood, it's also a romantic comedy. And I feel there has been lots of talk about the romantic comedy dead. Oh, there's a renaissance. Like, how did you guys feel about, I suppose, this genre um, kind of approaching this one? And what, I suppose, kind of the pitfalls that you didn't want to fall into, you know, the kind of trappy, cliche, rom-com things that kind of killed it. Like, what were you kind of like actively avoiding things so that you made it feel far more relevant and more modern and reflective of like today? I think it accidentally became a romantic comedy. I think I wrote it as a, like a rite of passage story about um, this woman Zoe. And then I snuck a lot of romance in and now it's a romantic comedy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think by the night, like it, it's, it's, yeah, it is funny when people describe it as a romantic comedy. They're like, it's a romantic comedy, but they're together at the start. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I mean, the the, the 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 definition of a romantic comedy is pretty, uh, I don't know, prescriptive sometimes, but it happens to have, I guess, romance and comedy in it. But I agree with Soph. Like, it's it's definitely a, um, yeah, like it, it seems like a real journey for Zoe's character, and it yeah, it feels like a pregnancy movie a bit. I don't know if it's a thing. <laughs> Or I don't know, a, a woman. Let's make it a thing. Movie, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. is that a genre? Yeah. I think that's a genre. A woman, a woman freaking out. I think, I think, hey, I think the, <laughs> these genres are definitely coming out now because there's these, yeah, exactly. There's such a time for it. St. Francis came out recently, you know, women freaking out about motherhood. It feels like we need this. We need this right now. Um, I, I wanted to ask because I suppose Taika Waititi was uh, executive producer on this. Um, is there something that having his name attached to something makes it 
makes it a little bit easier to get made other because obviously you know indie films now are trying to get financing and quite interesting about how you are able to do this especially as there's quite a big gap between this and the last movie fan tales which you did together so you know having him on board but how did that kind of Im improve like being able to make this i think we got it up really fast compared to other um new zealand films uh we, and also like a lot of funding is New Zealand government funding. So it's sort of soft money, which is quite different to mm. the rest of the world. And Taika's part of um, Picky Films and they, yeah, they're, they're kind of huge. They're, Taika's a huge champion for New Zealand filmmakers and, and you know, making sure that we're still able to, to keep telling our stories and hopefully letting those stories you know, be seen among, around the world. And so that's what um, Taika and Carthew try to do with Picky. And so they're also big believers. And once you've got that nugget of an idea to try and get it off the ground as quick as possible. So yeah, absolutely with, with their help, we were able to, um, to move quite quickly with the film. And- um, Which was mental because we had a three month old baby when we were shooting. Yeah, it was almost too fast. <laughs> we didn't realize it. <laughs> We had a baby. We were like, oh, the film's never going to get up. Yeah. We just have a baby. The producers are like, oh, yeah, we'll probably start filming Another this baby. in February. And we were like, ah, that's, that's rubbish. It won't get made till like the end. <laughs> and then, you know, sure enough, up it goes. And we were like, but, but we're, we're pregnant. We're about to have a baby. And, uh, and they're like, well, we're just going to have to roll with it. And so we did. So we just had like our three months just old on ourselves. set. It was basically like making a film and having a crash at the same time some days. Curtis yeah. got yeah. shingles. Yeah, it was a bad Oh, no, got shingles. I remember that. I'm taking my nanny because he's rich. So that's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> weren't, weren't you finishing like the script, some like versions of the script, like in like hospital stuff? Like you were like, you got exhausted and you were like sending yeah. it from freaking like, it was insane. So the, these guys are too, they, these guys, yeah, work a bit too Rose, hard to make everyone else feel terrible. We had blocked that out, Rose. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, <whatever. laughs> Come on. Hey, it's a good story. No, because I think... <laughs> yeah. And they will definitely be watching this Q&A, uh, I hope. <laughs> um, I reminded them. Um, uh, what, I suppose, I mean, touching on that, because I feel like, you know, it is hard. It, it, it's hard. Making movies is a really hard endeavor, like an endeavor, trying to get all the ducks in the row. And again, like you're going through different rewrites, you're kind of putting it actually doing the pre-production then you've got the production and your post-production and I suppose you together I mean my parents have been working together for 22 years so they've got a vibe but I wonder for you two you know is it has is it far easier to work together than it is to work on projects separately I suppose I think you get you get a yes lot for no. free in that um we've stopped being polite to each other with feedback <laughs> you just yeah. quickly get stuff done we can have a meeting at three in the morning um yeah i i like working with you more than anyone else oh that's nice Aww. oh god <laughs> get a room for god I, I <laughs> oh, goodness. more than anyone else as well oh my god look we're still <laughs> together aren't we but it's, it's <laughs> i scream at him on the way home from set sometimes yeah it's not all roses but um but it is, uh, it is a, a good way to work. You, it, you, you basically can't get away from the film. And I think that's what gives it a certain energy as well. Um, whether that's healthy or not for the relationship. <laughs> Always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty and, uh, but then and, once you've made it, you get, you get moments like these where the film comes out and, and people, you know, really seem to like it and, uh, and it all feels worthwhile. So, so this is, this is like the payoff for the back end. Yeah. Absolutely. And Rose, this, you know, you, you're no stranger to um, TV sets, but this is kind of your first big leading role. How was that for you as a challenge to kind of, I suppose, you know, I'm sure that like you've mentioned there was a like collaborative, you were able to put a lot of yourself and, you know, ad lib and stuff. But again, this is fully undertaken another person. For you, your like kind of pro uh, the progress in creating this character and becoming this character on set and switching off, you know, how is that? Tell me about the craft of bringing this character to life. Sorry, really like, the craft. You gotta tell me about the craft. <laughs> I, mean, I find it so, so weird. I mean, this is, I mean, this is the, the, the it's, it's, all I would say to, to, to Curtis and Sophie all the time in rehearsals, I'm like, I don't act, man. I don't know what acting is, dude. And it's, it's, it's funny because I, I, I do. I mean, I, and I know that like, I've had it, experience doing all that stuff but I think when you you kind of 
you when you do comedy you kind of you have to actively choose that path a little bit I mean, some people can do it concurrently with, you know, doing comedy and, and, and being able to do, do a bit of acting. I know a lot of those people, but but I don't know. I think I just didn't follow that path when I was a bit younger and I did lots of comedy stuff. But um, uh, I it was it was yeah, it was a weird, it was a scary thing. It was a scary thing to like be stuck, be the lead in the, in the film. Um, I was nervous that people were going to watch it and go, oh, no, oh honey, no, this is, <laughs> can't do this. Um, but but thankfully, I think I, 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 uh, uh, it's I did the opposite. okay. But yeah, no, but, but, but it's because so, so it's the script. Like, I mean, I just don't think I could have done that without such a, a script that meant, empowered me to do good acting and to have Curtis there and, and, and so, you know, and set to empower me to do that. And I, I think, you know, it, it could have been a, I could have been terrible if this was a terribly directed film. Like, we weren't sure. Thankfully, <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I know. I bet you weren't sure. Cause it's like, it, it is taking a risk of it. Like I could have been awful, but you know, um, uh, it's well, those dramatic kind of more, there's more like dramatic scenes and stuff in the film. And I think people have been re- like slightly surprised that I didn't do terribly in those bits, but it's crying and I cry all the time. I mean, there's so many elements of that, you know, I think <laughs> in my stand up, like my stand up isn't very, um, my stand up's quite, uh, I do play a bit of a character in my stand up. So it's kind of, you know, you, you learn the tools and stuff, but yeah, it certainly was, mm a nerve-wracking thing um to, to to have to to do my first ever like kind of dramatic role being like in every scene essentially of a film but um I'm lucky it turned out right Curtis, you could do it. Curtis had, yeah, we, mean, watched, we, did. In your comedy. we watched your stand up and we were just like, like oh, we, yeah. we knew that it was there She'll be able to go there. I just feel like I had to spend a lot of time yeah. just convincing you that you were also a really good actor as well as a comedian <laughs> 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 that's what you and a lot of people in my life have to do that to be fair that's, uh, <laughs> that was my job no, just to tell yeah. you you're really good at acting and that, hey and that. <laughs> uh, I, i'm definitely of the belief that i think comedians um can do drama far better than dramatic actors can do comedy. I definitely think there's something oh, in that yeah. for sure. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely, I, I hope this means that either we're going to have another collaboration here or, I mean, I hope so, but also Rose, that this is something you definitely want to pursue more. Obviously we love your stand up. I love your Taskmaster. Um, I thought you were great. Oh, and I, I loved all the outfits that you wore as well. Stand up. <laughs> I'm moving on. <laughs> I'm <laughs> done. No, no, I'm over no, it. No, no. I'm a harsh pivot into dramatic acting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely. Definitely. Um, no, I'm. I'm but, waiting, for, so I'm I, waiting for the calls, man. I'm waiting for the calls. None of them have come through. No one's come oh. through with these dramatic <laughs> roles. No one, you know. I'm, wait, I'm waiting for the big directors to come come along, but the you know I, I, I must have. I think my phone plan has run out, so I think they're not. It's not. I'm um, taking any like calls from random numbers. <laughs> probably it. Yeah. And Curtis and Sophie, I mean, you know, you guys are actors as well as filmmakers. There's definitely, definitely a pull to be more behind the screen um, nowadays than pursue maybe because obviously, you know, you know, you can do both. You're a triple threat. <laughs> no, we've retired from acting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an acting requirement to do an ad. I'll but, do the I'll do the old But honestly, now. I watched Rose on set in one of you know, one of the scenes where she cries so many, where she just goes there, and I'm like, oh, she's just so. There's just such an ease about her performance in the film that I was like, I'm never acting again. That's it. Like I can't believe how good she is. Oh my god. <laughs> No, I, I, I think you said earlier about, um, <laughs> why don't you do a lockdown thing? Mark. Everyone's yeah. doing them. Get your Malcolm and Marie's up. Sorry. Oh um, <laughs> um, I, you said something earlier, Rose, about uh, the New Zealand sense of humour. And I think mm-hmm. definitely that is something we're seeing. You know, there's such an appetite for New Zealand comedies, you know, going back to like, you know, uh, the flight of Concords, like coming through, you know, we see so much with Taika, but you know, it seems like there's far more of an appetite and, you know, New Zealand films are coming more on a global stage. Have you felt that? Have you felt that you're getting more opportunities to kind of make films that rather than just keeping it localised, actually you're getting people from around the world are like, we love this, we want more? Um, 
Oh, uh, um, yeah. I mean, I think it's more like, I think the more New Zealand comedy that people see and on a, on a global level means that people's perception of New Zealand comedy is less uh, narrow, I think. I think it has been Club of Concords, you know, like, and Taika stuff. It, it, it is like, you know, and I think that that's a fair representation of our sense of humour. But, um, you know, I think they they've they've like opened the door for far more new zealanders to be able to like achieve success kind of globally and you know that, that happened for me going to edinburgh and being able to do my shows um in edinburgh for so long but so many you know new zealand comedians have done that in, in the past years and stuff but i think um i think it's more like normalizing uh <laughs> normalize they normalize new zealand comedy guys. <laughs> let's normalize new zealand comedy. but no it, it, it's it's more like you know it, i think it's when you hear more of like kiwi accents and all that stuff and there's less of like a stereotype of what a new zealander is or what a new zealander looks like uh i think um yeah i, I mean i'm like doing a show you know for like i'm writing i'm, I'm working on a sitcom at the moment and it's not about necessarily the fact I'm a New Zealander. Like that's an aspect of my character, but that's not what it's about because people are used mm. to, you know, New Zealand accents or New Zealand people. And, and that has a lot to do with, you know, the past few years of, and like the exposure that kind of, you know, Tiger's films and Flight of the Conquers and all that stuff has had. But, um, but yeah, I, I think it, it is becoming a bit easier. People are making fun of my accent a little less, but still a lot, you know. So I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think that will ever go away. I think it will be an obsession of British yeah. people forever. It's fine. <laughs> Kate and Sophie, I mean, you guys, you, you know, is this, you know, it's so vital to be making local stories. But is there something that you want to do? Move, move out, move to Hollywood. You know, are you keen to kind of expand those horizons as well? Look, we did want to move to Hollywood, but not after the last. I don't think we're allowed at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm very happy. In New I don't think you want to go there at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Very, very pleased to be. Yeah, we're pretty lucky. There's like there's one one cake yesterday, and that's like the first. We are freaking out about it. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. freaking out. Like we've had like a hundred days of no cases, so we're pretty lucky to be on this little island down in the bottom of nowhere. Um, but yes, we've got big ambitions with, with ideas and stuff, but, um, but I guess until the world kind of settles down, we'll just kind of keep that on hold for a little just bit and them enjoy making, making New Zealand stories over here. So much stuff oh, has been well, in New Zealand love... at the moment though. Like I would say, like, you know, everyone, it's weirdly like Hollywood has come to New Zealand for a bit in the, like the last like year and stuff. Like everyone I know, like, you know, is, is flying to New Zealand to film all of these things. Like, yeah. I think it's going to be weirdly reversed because New Zealand is able to shoot stuff at the moment. So right. We're it's like- bring people to us instead. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I don't want to come, please. God, that's how to do it. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I appreciate so much for giving me your time. Thank you for the movie, it was amazing. I've got to do some thank yous. Thank you to Vertigo Releasing for making tonight's event possible. And most of all, obviously, thanks to you guys, Rose, Sophie and Kurt, it's so brilliant to talk about this movie. Uh, Baby Done is available now at Curzon Home Cinema. If you enjoyed this film and this event, please tell all your friends and all your family and all your Twitter mutuals and all that jazz. Uh, you can follow Curzon Cinemas on Twitter and Facebook latest updates on upcoming events for Living Room 2. I've been your host tonight, Hannah Flint, uh, and I guess this Q&A done? Q&A done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.